Okay, my name is Gary Matsuoka from Laguna Hills Nursery, and today we'll be talking, well, we'll warn you or give you a warning about what is going on with dirt. Um, the problem we are facing is that most people are being told that compost, which is a ground up dead tree, is better than soil. And we're telling you it's not the same thing. So compost, which is a dead ground up tree that was allowed to rot in a big pile and then bagged up and sold to you as soil is about the worst thing you can ever grow a plant in. Uh, when you think about it, why would anybody want to grow a plant in a dead plant? Uh, dead plants are the perfect medium or uh, material to grow mushrooms in, not plants. So what we know about real dirt and we were next to, our nursery had a growing ground next to a um, organic farm for three years and the farmer there, a prominent farmer, told us that their soil was the best they'd ever farmed in. And this is showing you what real dirt is. It's mostly sand. Now the problem we're having in the trade is they're telling you that compost is the best soil. Compost is better than dirt, whereas compost is a dead plant. Soil primarily is mineral. So uh, the analysis of soil in University of California, Davis did soil analysis on farms in the year 2000. They did it in 1950 also and said that soil is 99 percent mineral, 1 percent organic matter. Now the University of New Hampshire has said that the organic matter, the source of organic matter, which is important to the soil, is not dead plants that didn't decompose that made it into the ground. They're claiming that the organic content of the soil, the 1% organic content, is stuff that was alive in the soil. Uh, roots, um, protozoa, amoebas, all the things that live in the soil naturally, when they do a soil analysis, those come up as making the 1% organic content. So the soil really is primarily just mineral. Sand, salts, and clay is good soil. That's a loam, so loam, and we've heard the uh, definition of loam being messed up too because loam is not compost. It has nothing to do with compost. So the term loam just means that the soil has three sizes of minerals, sand, silt, and clay. doesn't mean there's any compost in it, but uh, a lot of people are, are promoting adding compost to the soil to make a rich loam, that's not, that's not true. Loam just means it's got sand, salt, and clay in it. So, a proper soil is called loam, and it consists of sand, silt, and clay. Now, when you think about it, or when you know that what sand really is, sand, you know, if you melt sand, you get glass. Sand is quartz. Quartz is silicon dioxide, same as glass. Silt and sand particles generally are fairly rounded particles of, uh, silk, of quartz. Silt is like the little chips off, that's off the sand. They were created as the sand um, particles came down the river. The silt was chipped off of them. And clay generally are little flakes, real tiny flakes of, of rock that are made out of silicon, oxygen, uh, aluminum, iron, manganese, or magnesium, and that's the clay. Now, so what soil is, you take a piece of granite, the white parts of the granite are the quartz, the darker specks are a feldspar which becomes the clay. So soil itself, good soil, is just a piece of granite that's ground up real well by the riverbeds. And you get kind of uh, rounded particles and that becomes your sandy loam soil. Now the way soil operates or works is that sand particles are roughly rounded quite rounded when you look at them through a, a microscope, they're quite rounded. And if you know physics at all, in physics, when you have spheres, 
in a bucket or grouped together, the solid parts of the spheres are two-thirds of the volume. The spaces between the spheres is about one-third the volume. The silt is roughly the same thing, so it's, it also uh, gives you a soil of an area that, or a volume that's one-third air, two-thirds solid. Clay, though, is really small particles that are flattened, almost like flakes. Uh, now, all soil particles attract water. So soil is negatively charged, and it'll attract a layer of water molecule stick to each soil particle. So the way soil holds water is the water molecules stick to it. Not super tight if you can bake them off, but they adhere pretty well. So the thing about clay is that it's such a small particle. Clay holds a lot of water versus its own size, versus sand or silt. Uh, so if you've got soil that's got a lot of clay content, it does hold more water than if you have a soil that has sand. This is kind of our visual aid to show how soil works. Now this is not purport, properly proportioned. The, t the tennis balls here should be actually be, be about as big as bowling balls and then that's the sand. The ping pong balls represent the silt and the flat lentil seeds represent the clay. They should be flatter and smaller actually but this will give you a good idea. Um, if you've got a sandy soil the air can go through it quite easily. We call that how permeable the soil is. Now, just you know, there's a couple of terms we use a lot. Permeability of the soil is how well the air moves through it. And the bigger the space is, the more easily air can move through it. Uh, plant roots need oxygen to breathe. They need oxygen to prevent getting sick and rotting. Root rot is uh, due to a lack of oxygen in the soil. So if your soil has got low permeability, you tend to get root rot easier. Uh, the clay particles fill up all the spaces between the sand and the silt and you don't have any more airflow. So clay, clay holds, well all the soil particles hold water well, but clay has the most surface area because the particles are so small and clay is more porous, it holds more water. If you've got too much clay, now the spaces between the sand and silt, 33% uh, of the soil volume. And what happens is if suddenly your soil is 33% clay, you've pretty much filled up all the gaps between your sand and your silt. And then the soil no longer breathes. And then at that point, when we reach about 35% clay in the soil, we call the soil a clay soil. It can be 65% sand, but if you've got 35% clay, the clay particles fill up all the gaps and the soil no longer breathes. That's the clay soil. So it doesn't take much clay to ruin sand, but you can make the soil breathe. If you've only got 35% clay and you add 5% sand to your soil, suddenly you've got soil that breathes again. So don't listen to the um, quote pros that tell you adding sand to clay makes concrete. Sand and clay are both uh, primary you know, uh, components of good soil. You need both to have good soil. Now, clay is, can be a problem, but it's not poisonous. The plants don't mind being in clay as long as there's nothing rotting in there. I mean, if you add compost to a clayish soil, uh, you've got trouble because the compost itself is decomposing. You know, compost is never finished until it's gone. And if compost is decomposing in soil, it's using up a lot of oxygen, oxygen. And if you don't allow it enough oxygen, it starts creating sewer gases, which are very toxic to plant roots. So the biggest problems we have now is people are trying to grow plants in compost or mixing compost into your good soil, and it makes the soil more toxic instead of healthier. Um, in nature, compost belongs on top of the ground, not in the ground. So, uh, so this lesson today is, you know, if you've got sandy soil, you've got good soil. If your soil is mostly, now sandy loam, which is what a farmer wants, just means that your clay content is below 20%.
and that's well-drained soil. Now in farming, in farming there are other materials that are used to grow plants in. Uh, in the hothouses of Europe they've spent millions of dollars uh, doing research telling farmers what materials they can use to grow their vegetables in the hothouse. You know, it's fairly expensive to grow things in a hothouse. You want to make sure you've got the best that you can do. Uh, generally, the more air you can get to the roots of plants, the faster they'll grow, uh, and the more water you can get to them. And it turns out that the coarser materials, as long as you continuously water, um, do quite well, and, and that's what hydroponics is. You get uh, maximize your airflow to the roots, and you uh, constantly give them water and nutrients, and they grow much faster than they would in real dirt. Now, in Holland, they know that there's quite a few materials that work well for plants for growing the, in, them in. Pumice is one. Pumice is actually quartz that is aerated by volcanic gases. Perlite is the man-made version of quartz. They, they um, heat up quartz in an oven and it pops. The water inside the crystals pops and makes the perlite, which is a man-made version of pumice. Uh, of course, sand is fine. Sand breathes real well. It is used a lot. Decomposed granite, which is pretty much decomposed granite, is coarse soil that's uh, not been through a riverbed yet, so the particles haven't had a chance to become rounded. They're more squarish or crystallized shapes, so they're very permeable soil. Uh, one of the favorites is clay pellets. So this is clay that's in itself not very permeable, when, but when you fire it into round pellets, suddenly the clay becomes quite permeable. Still holds on to moisture, holds on to nutrients well, uh, quite good for growing plants in, in hothouses. And they do use artificial things like uh, woven uh, minerals. This is rock wool. So it's a type of mineral that's woven or uh, melted and, and made into uh, strands, thread-like strands to hold air and water. Now most potting soils on the market today um, generally are made out of compost. So this started about 1960. They, the original potting soils of the world were sand or loam. Sandy loam was used in pots. Uh, my father in the 1950s grew most of the nursery plants in sandy loam, uh, but sand was noted as being a more vigorous medium to grow plants in containers. Uh, starting in the 60s, they tried to make it lighter. It was supposed to be peat moss and sand mixture that does a good job, but uh, it was always sand's a bit heavy, peat moss was a bit expensive, uh, they decide to try to see what they can do with, with uh, ground up bark and ground up wood and some uh, people d decided that it was good enough for growing plants in containers to use ground up wood even though it's not a stable material. So ground up wood, the research shows, will last about five months. Uh, suitable for growing plants for about five months at a time and after that it becomes kind of toxic because it's breaking down into sludge. So most parts of the United States when you grow container plants you put them in a pot in the spring usually they freeze by Thanksgiving by November they're frozen. Uh, the next spring you discard the pot, get new soil, you know, new compost, put your plants in it uh, you can get away with that if you, if you do that uh, method where you discard the plants after five or six months of use because the soils, that uh, compost is no longer good enough for soil. Now in areas where we are, Southern California, Southern Florida, or for indoor plants, you really don't want soil that's bad after five or six months. Um, so 25 years ago we started looking into soils and uh, in the mid-90s we made, made our own soil because we couldn't find anything that was supposed to last more than five or six months. And uh, for some plants, compost doesn't work at all. And if you can imagine, compost is a dead ground-up tree. 
Well, that's the perfect environment for growing mushrooms, not plants. That's for mushrooms grow. Mushrooms love to live in dead trees. Uh, plants can get their minerals from dead trees to grow, but it's not their home. Their home is primarily, you know, a quartz medium. So when we made our own potting soils, we made sure that we had a lot of permanent material in the bag. And our current potting soil that we have at the moment, which is our uh, Gary's Best Top Pot mix, this is uh, volcanic rock, sponge rock, sand, a lot, that's two-thirds of it is permanent material. And then there's charcoal in there. Charcoal is what makes the black soils of the world rich in black. And it does have some peat moss in it, one-third peat moss to hold the moisture. Peat moss uh, stores and releases water better than any other material we know of. So, so that's our soil. Uh, with this soil, you can don't have any fear of overwatering. It doesn't rot in water. Whereas most potting soils, because they're dead plants, you keep them on the wet side or even just normally moist and everything in it is rotting because that's what it's supposed to do. So, so we encourage you to figure out what, you, what kind of soil you need for your application and get what's right, not what you're being told to buy from all the uh, soil companies that want to sell you a dead tree instead of real dirt. So if you've got sandy loam, um, so if you have pretty nice soil like this, and this is found in many areas, uh, local areas, don't mess it up by adding compost to it. The compost, if you mix it into this stuff, will lower the oxygen level of your soil, and it can create conditions that are toxic to the roots. Uh, in future lessons, we'll will explain what to do if you need to increase the area, the permeability of your soil, and also how to uh, fix plants that are growing in the wrong soil.